today we're going to be doing a breakdown on the Drip Tech TS. Things I use to do this, rubbing alcohol, container for alcohol, Allen driver that was supplied. I like having a set of these ceramic tweezers, flathead screwdriver that will fit the positive contact screw below the button and the negative contact key or tool that was provided with the unit. So I have batteries in this. You want to always try to use the tool. Um, it's part of the polarity protection. If one of these cells was reversed, this tool will not reach in far enough to short against the positive cell. Once it's loose, this set of tweezers is perfect for getting it to drop out of the top cap. It's hard to see. There's a little bit of arcing on the plate, it's sort of normal. If you have a tendency of pushing the button on one side, the screw comes down and contacts a little harder first, but does not affect performance. Okay, from there, basically we want to move into cleaning out these threads and all the exposed raw surfaces. at the body we want to make sure that we wipe down all the overall exposed areas inside these threaded ports as well ideally if we can get some rubbing alcohol down in those it'll break down the juice that manages to get down inside of there <laughs>
been wiped down contact area wise. The only thing we have left to do is to fish this stuff out and get that wiped down. Okay, time for reassembly. These are copper contacts. They can be easily cross-threaded, so you want to be very careful and take your time and make sure that they glide back in. You don't want to set those all the way or else you'll just have to back them out. You want to make sure that you're still not protruding. Next we'll get the 510 put back into the top cap. Just lay it in place. Tweezers work the best. And you want to go counterclockwise. Once that's snug, key will give you a little bit more leverage. Let's make sure that's nice and tight in there so all the connections work out well. One spot on the top cap that I overlooked <clears throat> is down inside these four ports. These do actually make connection with the top or bottom of the head of the screw to continue the negative connection. So getting something small in there down to wipe those out. Okay, ready to start reassembly. I'm gonna reinsert the switch leg into the insulator. It's important that when you're reassembling that the switch leg and pin and insulator are all held down towards the 510 end of the top cap. I usually just center everything up, hold back pressure with my thumb, and then continue to put the button back together. You want this screw to be centered on all the radius edges of the switch leg. That can be done by just adjusting off the sides with the screwdriver. Once you look centered and you're towards the 510, you can check your button orientation. Once that's set, you can hold your button and pinch and make sure this screw is nice and tight. If it shifts a little bit, you can pry it back and the idea is is you want to make sure that it is moving freely away from the edges of the delver. Reinstall your spring. This flat piece of delver can only go one way. Either side works, doesn't make a difference. Small hole is always towards the 510. Larger hole is always towards the button. If you happen to try to install it reversed, only four of the screw holes are open. So you cannot actually reassemble. And tighten these down drastically. 
just get them to where they're lightly centering the internals on the top cap. Then you want to check it and make sure it's going to fit. There we go. Go ahead and go back and snug these four down. Reinstall your O-ring. Make sure that is pressed into place. Get ready to set your top back into the body. Of course, the 510 has to go on the bottle side. Button on the So they're contacting the raw metal inside the socket. to know that you're making contact and you can check all that so you don't go through the hassle of putting it all back together and uh, taking it all back apart <clears throat> okay from there we are reinstalling our batteries positive towards the top of the mod all three batteries This will just slide back in, use our key. You want to make sure that you sort of maybe apply just light pressure so everything's seated around the connection area. Snug these battery terminals down. device is ready for business. Short of wicking this up and putting my bottle in. She has power. So I've straightened up a little bit. We're gonna go over filling up the bottle. Be able to pull the top cap off and the straw. Figure out which juice you're gonna be vaping. You wanna fill up to the shoulder. As you start to drop the straw and top cap in, keep the straw covered with the finger. Drop it in, squeeze the juice up into the neck, insert the lid, and snap it down. No juice. Pretty clean. From there, all we're going to do is just drop it into the mod, reinsert the thumb screw. You don't have to make these things super tight. Just tight enough to where the bottle is steady inside the mod. Should basically be flush with the bottom. And you're just about ready to go short of working this up. Okay, so I'm gonna wick this up and go over some basic bottle function.
bottle. The juice will push right up into the well. You can hold the bottle and just let the cotton soak it up. You let off, pull it all back down. Okay, so it's not horribly uncommon. See a little bit of arcing around the shape of the button. That's gonna depend on which way you're pushing the button, how well the button assembly is centered with the switch leg, a couple other little things. Something else you wanna look at is making sure these screws are tight and that none of the heads have tool marks or sharp edges from being tightened. Get that to focus back in. Same thing, you can see some light arcing across the top. I tend to push on the back side of the button. It's a good way to see how everything is centered up on the switch leg. I can get really close. You can see that there's a gap and that the button moves freely.